Hello, listeners, and welcome to another edition of uh, Turf Talk. I'm Rissa Alice, Michael Kane, and I'm here to take you through a preview of the upcoming 10 race card that's going to be on show at Cavanaugh's Park on Saturday, the 5th of August, 2023. It's the 84th running of the Jamaica Oaks, and this is for three old fillies. They go 2,000 meters or 10 furlongs, and they run for a purse of 3.75 million. A field of 11 has been assembled to go postwards. All the races on the card named after past winners of the Jamaica Oaks. We also have the likes of All for Pleasure, that 2005 winner of the Oaks to be on the spotlight, as well as Paulie the Rich Girl, 1991 winner of the Oaks, the Hairloo, 1959 winner of the Oaks, and that's, of course, the first year when Cayman Spark came into being. The Market Partner Trophy is going to be one of the features. The Beverly Roden Memorial Cup is also going to be one of the features, as well as the Emma Chen Memorial Trophy. So it's Ladies' Day at Cayman's Park on the 5th of August. Oaks Day, Ladies' Day. Always a great day to look forward to on the racing calendar. First post is at 11.45 a.m. And here's where we have Heirloom, 1959 winner of the Oaks, being honored. And we have our secret on three for Nature Bread, five and up, nuns of Four, as well as importies, six and up, nuns of four, as well as importies, five and up, non of three. They raise a purse of 800,000, regular six starts in the first event. Minimum guaranteed paid is two million. The jackpot, 7.868 million. There's a high five carryover as well of 247,693 and 73 cents. Off the field of 10, I prefer numbers two, Buff Bay, three, Vanquisher, four, Big Argument, and seven, Bad Gal Riri. Two, three, four, seven. That's my best four. The one I like on top is number three, Vanquisher. Was second by Linton Das. The JJ the striker over a thousand meters straight in the mid and three feet of a second mid. Over a thousand four to five was well bet that day. Matthew Bennett maintains the bomb for trainer Marlon Brown. And this Vanquisher is going to be my top selection. Number four is Big Argument. Stepped up to the numbers of four left on Das and was third over seven furlongs behind Snowflakes and Fault Line. Cuts back in distance to six furlongs. Paul Francis maintains the bomb for trainer Edward Stanbury. We'll keep big argument on the right side. Bad gallery rear number seven. One and last after serving very badly at the start. The time was 104 flat to slow time. Beating more score than Prosecco. But she has some back class about her. And given that she'll get a better start, she should be able to go home early in the room in his ride to a trainer Howard Jagai. At number two is Buff Bay. The champion jockey Dane Dawkins. He picks a mount here for trainer Fitzgerald Richards. Buff Bay has been... Well bet on several occasions since the return to active competition in March, but has not gotten as close to a victory as yet. The choice of rider, though, inspires some confidence here. Dane Dawkins will keep Buff B on the right side. Make it 3, 4, 7, and 2 in the here loom. Vanquisher to get the better of Big Argument, Bad Gal Riri, and Buff B. Dr. Paulette and Marshall, they both agree with me. With Vanquisher to start the Oaks card. Race 2 is for Cash Hoshe, 1982 Oaks winner. We have a field of 6. They'll go 1,500 meters or 7.5 for They run for a purse of 750,000. It's a restricted allowance. 5 native bred 4 years and up nuns of 2 and importees 4 years and up maidens. My best 4. 1. Princess Sylvia 2. Great Wayne 3. Jungle Boogie and 5. Don Vincenzo 1, 2, 3 and 5 and that's actually my order of preference as well. Take a number 1. Princess Sylvia on top. Raced uh, for the first time under the care of Donovan Phillips and Nas, with second by two lengths, a strong second behind traditional lady. Look for Princess Sylvia to go one better here. Paul Francis replaces Ray and Lewis in the saddle. Number two, Great Wayne, second on the last outing. That came behind Dream of Paris over a mile. Went off at four to five and chased relentlessly from the top of the lane. Just couldn't get back to the speed in Dream of Paris, who had an uncontested lead. Great Wayne has Jordan Bart once again for trainer Ralph Roberts. We keep this one on the right side. And Jungle Boogie, number three. Made a big move. Passed in the third on pole two lengths clear, but could not hold on from Select Me, who finished very effectively. Matt Bennett maintains a bound here for trainer Anthony Nunes. Jungle Boogie should be in the thick of things where it matters most once again. And Don Vincenzo has had several opportunities to get a win at this level, but has continued to disappoint. But still, very well bet on each occasion. And the choice of rider champion jockey Dane Dawkins will mean that Don Vincenzo will get a lot of attention in the market once again. Make it 1, 2, 3, 5 in the Cas O'Shea. Princess Sylvia over Great Twain, John Boogie, and Don Vincenzo. Dr. Polite and Marshall, they both agree with me. With Princess Sylvia in race 2, which begins the catch 9, back at the fresh of a 500,000 minimum guarantee period, having had 
a mandatory payout on the most recent race day. Race 3 is next. We start the play spot 8 here. It's so ratted. 1971 Oaks. Whether we have a field of 7, they'll go 1,500 meters. They run for a purse of 820,000. It's for the 550,000 or 450,000 claim level. Of the 7 horses, they're going to go posters. I like 2, 3, 4, and 6 as my best 4. Prosecco, Show Curtain, Fault Line, and Modern Miracle. The one that comes out on top is number 4, Fault Line. Has been second on the last three occasions. Just beaten by Snowflakes on last time. Running on over 7 furlongs. Gets a half a furlong along of the travel. Is now in among a couple of 550 claimers. The likes of Modern Miracle in an attack for the first time as a 3 old. The last 3 old they saw coming in on a 50 tag. We skid one. So that goes well for the chances of Modern Miracle. And Silent Cat, a usual claimer. This one has Stephen Foster in the saddle. So the two tag horses here, Modern Miracle and Silent Cat. The others are here without a tag. Prosecco, Alan Bongaj and Mirage, right to return to Patrick Lynch. Patrick Lynch has two runners, the other being so curtain with Ramon appearing in the saddle. Prosecco has joint top weight of 57 kilos, joint top weight with Fort Line. And they appear to be the better horses in the lineup, and they could very well settle on the fight at the finish. I'm going to take number four, Fort Line. Just over number two, Prosecco, then three, Show curtain and six, Modern Miracle. Dr. Pollett agrees with me with Fort Line, and Marshall from Purple Island, and my groom goes to number two. Prosecco. Race 3 is next. It's for one draw, 1996 Oaks winner. We have a field of 9, make the field of 8 rather, and they'll go 1,000 meters straight. It's for the 250 on the 200,000 claimers. They run for a purse of 700,000. The best 4 for me here includes 2, Mr. Ambassador, 3, KD Rocket, 5, Stanislaus, and 7, 3, Card Guy, 2, 3, 5, 7. That's where we're going in race number 4. Trainer, Adrian Prince, more popularly known as Dan Dan. Has a strong hand here with Stanislaus number five with Tevin Foster and KD Rocket number six with Andrew Paul in the saddle. And his father, Tyrone Prince. He also has another runner here, and that's Boss Easy. So it should be a princely affair in race number four. And thrown in the mix as well. The lady, Lydia Anglin, more popular known as Sharon. And she has three guard card guy. And she has appointed Samantha Fetcher to ride. Three card guy exposed his well being at last. When finishing second by two and a half lengths is Stanislaus. Stanislaus is back here now. So this one will have some run to do to, do to turn the tables on Stanislaus. But that was a very encouraging run by a three-card guy. Actually beat my Stanislaus on two of his last three appearances. Make it five, three, seven, and two. The Adrian Prince pair. The Dan Dan pair. Stanislaus to get the better of KD Rocket. Then the lady on Ladies Day. Lydia Anklin, more popular known as Sharon, could she get her first career win as a new licensed trainer? She's going to be up against her batchmate, Adrian Prince. Interesting fourth event here. Going to go 5, 3, 7, and 2. Science Laws, KD Rocket, 3 card guy, and Mr. Ambassador. Dr. Polite's tip is number 7, 3 card guy. Marshall agrees with me with Science Laws. Race number 5 is the next start the Twilight 6 year. Minimum guaranteed payout is $2 million. We have a field of 7, and this is for a restricted allowance 5, native bread 5 years and up. And in Portis, six years up nuns of two. And in Portis, five years and up maidens. It's for a poor little rich girl. 1991. Jamaica Oaks winner. A field of seven. A thousand meters straight. The purse, 720,000. And this fifth event starts the Twilight Six. Very interesting sequence for the Twilight Six on Ladies' Day. Jamaica Oaks Day. My best four are four. Under the champion, five, Lion Talk, six, Stick It On, and seven, Big Man Biden. Four, five, six, and seven, towards the outside, Big Man Biden. Jermar Jackson, more popular known as Back Juicy, rides for trainer Byron Davis and Big Man Biden. Showed good speed on last, led for five furlongs in that seven furlong contest won by Select Me over Jungle Boogie. Should carry his speed over this free run in five furlong straight distance. Look for Big Man Biden to be in the thick of things at the finish. Stick It On also goes well with the straight course, was second behind Bad Gal Riri. On the 10th of April, ridden that day by H. Benjamin. Harold Benjamin, more popularly known as Healing Oil. Ridden by the last uh, two occasions by Philip Parchment. Roger Hewitt now picks up the mount for trainer Court Williams. More popularly known as Stick Man. Look for Stick It On to make it a close affair throughout. Another champion gets Daniel Thompson for trainer Donovan Hutchinson, a.k.a. Dude. Now this, another champion, has been cutting back in distance. Never really showed anything over the straight, straight course. So, at 5 for long straight now, what will another champion do? That's a question to be answered. Second, by a length behind Magic Bullet over 6 for long in 1.92. Second, by a short head over 6.5 for long to Avenging Angel in 1.25.4. Four. 
maybe another champion will get lucky over the straight course. And Lion Talk number five, two-time champion apprentice O'Shane Nugent, he rides for trainer Ryan Williams. And this Lion Talk, third and last at the 250 level against Science Laws and three-card guy, back among restricted company. Now, look for Lion Talk to have a serious talk in the outcome of race number five for poor little rich girl. Make it 7645. Big man Biden to get the better of Sticky Don, another champion, and Lion Talk. Dr. Paulette and Marshall, they both agree with me with Big Man Biden. Race number six is next. It's for Emma Chen. It's the Emma Chen Memorial Trophy. It's her signal on 4490 red for the up nuns of three and imports for the up nuns of two. They run for a purse of 780,000, a field of 10. Declared to go post It's My best four includes one, Musu Blue, two, ex, two, the Exodus, four, She's My Friend, and nine, Power of Faith, one, two, four, nine. That's where we'll go in race number six. Number four, She's My Friend. Ryan Lewis, the leading rider, he picks it up for champion trade Jason Acosta. She's My Friend was beaten by Get a Pepsi, two starts back, second by two lengths. Over this trip of seven furlongs in 127 and a fifth of a second, Get a Pepsi stepped up to win again, beating Baby Like, and Baby Like came back to win in the following outing. So a very rich form line here is that of the 18th of June, where She's My Friend was second by two lengths behind that Get a Pepsi. Gilbert was third by eight lengths. Make that third by 10 lengths. Was eight lengths in arrears, so she's my friend. And Gilbert came back to finish second over the straight course recently in a very game effort there. And uh, that was a very good effort by Gilbert right in second over the straight course. And uh, that uh, effort should make it a good chance here for she's my friend. So she's my friend is going to be the top choice in race number six, the Emma Chen Memorial Trophy. For second, make it a one. Monsieur Blue. Kevin Foster rides for trainer Gresham Smith, a.k.a. Greasy, second by eight lengths on the ass to run away with a slammer. Came from off the pace, has good pace, can run in the mid-pack, so look for Monsieur Blue from a possible more forward the pace approach to fight out the finish here. Number nine is Power of Faith. This one gets a more relaxed pace at 1,400 meters and should be forward the pace. Jordan Bright rides with Donovan Plummer. Look for a big run from Power of Faith and the number... Four is going to be the top choice here. She's my friend over Monsieur Blue. Then Power Faith and the Exodus. Dr. Paul the Marshall both agree with me with She's my friend. Let's take a quick break and return to wrap up the main five races. Of- Welcome back uh, to the program. You're still Michael Kane taking the preview of the Jamaica Oaks card. And we're at race number seven. And this is for all for pleasure. 2005 winner of the Jamaica Oaks. We have a field of eight. They'll go 1,200 meters. It's a restricted allowance for... They run for a purse of 750000 off the field of eight. Declared to go poster at my best four here. Includes two, Queen Adele, three, Simba the Lion, six, Victor's Medallion, and seven, Traditional Boy. Two, three, six, and seven. That's where we're going to go in race number seven. Horse I like on top is number three, Simba the Lion. Has been given away several lengths at the start in recent times. Broke slow. Walked out of the gate on the 21st of January and finished second by a head over a mile behind right in flight. Dwelt at the start on the 29th of January. Took a break since uh, the 29th of January. Came back on the 1st of April and again was slow out of the box. Didn't uh, dwell that time. But uh, Simba the Lion gave away several lengths and was still second behind Fault 9. From a level break, Simba the Lion will win without most ease. Well, that's going to be a very big if. Champion Apprentice Yuvil Pinnock has been given the assignment by trainer Patrick Lynch, more popular known as the Professor. Simba the Lion, my top choice in the All for Pleasure. For second, make it number six, and that's going to be Victoria's Medallion. Tevin Foster rides for trainer Lee Ward Tomlinson. This one was fourth and last, one piece behind Gone on the Green and Prosecco. Look for a more positive approach here from Victoria's Medallion. For third, we make it number two, Queen Adele, Port Francis, or Edward Stanberry. This one has changed minds since we last saw her. Look for Queen Adele to go well for her new conditioner. And for fourth, make it number seven, traditional boy. He should be running on late, traditional boy. He's going to be ridden by Charlotte Budai for trainer Gordon Lewis. 3, 6, 2, 7. That's where I'm going in race number 7. Dr. Paul Knight's tip is number 6, Victoria's Medallion. And Marshall goes to number 3, Simba the Lion. The 8th event is next. It's a Margaret Parchment Trophy. It's a restricted allowance to, for native breath, 3 rounds of 2 and uh, Phyllis only are declared to go posters here. $1.1 million in purse money. So, it's Ladies' Day at Cayman's Park 
and Margaret Parchment is being honored in race eight on Jamaica Oaks Day. A feed of nine will go 1,200 meters. My best four here includes one Mrs. Lindhurst, two Epic, seven Speedy here, and nine City Hawk. One, two, seven, and nine. Those are the numbers that are like in race number eight. The one that came out on top for me, number nine, City Hawk, fought by Ford and Sundance behind the useful burlap. Joyce Golden was second, and California Gold was third. So City Hawk really ran well. Prominent for all five furlongs of that contest and finished fourth in the end. Not seeing anything as imposing as Burnap and Joyce Golden present here. California Gold will be taking part in the derby on Monday. So nothing as imposing present here. City Hawk is going to be the horse to beat in the Margaret Parchment Trophy. Number seven, Speedy here. One impressively on debut. 101 and a fifth of a second by four and a half in beating True the Begotten Son and Curling's Doom. Now, subsequent to that, has raced five times. Was third two starting back by 10 lengths to box box in Porti. Uncaptured Empress, another in Porti. So a good run over the street course on the 25th of June. Walked out of the starting gate on the 22nd of July. Slow out of the box and that was that. In that same burnout, Joyce Golden, California Gold event. If speed here can come away from the starting gate in good order, we'll have a mere 50 kilos with Abigail Abel for trainer Christopher Pearson, more popularly known as Superman. Speed here has good potential and can Show these a clean pair of heels. Number two, Epic. One on debut by head over Stan Dunk and James. Both Stan Dunk and James are still maidens. We'll see Stan Dunk in action on Derby Day. Epic has been beaten by some useful horses since. Beaten by Thalita, the eventual St. Ledger winner. Beaten by Royal Ash, Big Guy in the Sky, Essential Quality. Acknowledge me, all useful horses. So Epic looks to be in a spot where she should be able to get a job done. Roger Hute has the assignment for trainer Edward Stanberry. And number one is Mrs. Linders, has raced three times with one victory. She has a lot of scope to improve. Beat Babla, who came back to win. All beating a slow time for six four rounds. Babla won 18 and change. Mrs. Linders, though, can improve. And she has the champion jockey Dane Dawkins in the saddle, replacing Anthony Thomas. And the word is out that Anthony Thomas is at Gulfstream Park right now. So the next time you see Anthony Thomas on a program, it will be a Gulfstream Park program. So we wish Anthony Thomas, a.k.a. St. Mary, more popularly known as Awesome Anthony, all the best in his uh, tenure there at Gulfstream Park in Florida. I'm going to go 9721 in race number 8, the Market Parchment Trophy. City Hawk to get a better of Speedy here, Epic and Mrs. Linders. In this event, Dr. Paul Isip is number 2, Epic, and Marshall, my groom, he agrees with me with City Hawk. The ninth Temple Ultimate, 84th running of the Jamaica Oaks, a grade one event, $3.75 million in purse money, three old fillies only. It's a futurity event, and they'll go 2,000 meters, 11 fillies declared to go posters. My best four includes two awful love, four Mamma Mia, five brown skin girl, and 10 Lady Abimala, two, four, five, and 10. Those are the numbers I like for the 84th running of the Jamaica Oaks. One that comes out on top for me is the classy Mamma Mia. This year's Jamaica 1000 Guinness winner upset at 6 to 1, beating Thalita and all for love. Thalita came back and won the St. Ledger, beating Mamma Mia into fifth position by 14 and a quarter lengths. Now, the pace scenario of the St. Ledger was much more taxing than the pace scenario of this Oaks. With the likes of Mojito, there's also uh, a couple of other colts that were up there. Kings, that, that's Huntsman. So, this fit is on the contest is going to be a much less exacting task for Mamma Mia. Philip Parchment maintains a bound here for champion trainer Jason Costa and champion owner Carlton Watson. Mamma Mia should have a much more relaxed pace to work with here and as such she's going to take a lot more beating. Even though the trip of 10 furlongs doesn't appear to be her liking, the pace in our here much more comfortable for Mamma Mia and as such I've made her my top choice. Brown skin girl, her stable mate, Ran on to be fifth on Nas over six and a half rounds was seventh and well beaten in the 1,000 games by Mamma Mia. But Brown Skin Girl, one of her nine fellows and 25 yards going away in the end, she really has good stamina. She was fought by seven and three quarter lengths in the Portmore behind Thalita and Mamma Mia. So this Brown Skin Girl with 57 kilos and the go to rider, Ria Lewis, from the camp of Jason Acosta, this one, Brown Skin Girl, is owned and bred by Elizabeth Acosta, mother of. Jason Acosta, and it's Ladies' Day at Caymanus Park on Jamaica Oaks Day. And I'm quite confident that Jason Acosta, the champion trainer, would just love to win the Jamaica Oaks for his mom. 
Elizabeth Acosta. So a lot of sentiments attached with this brown-skinned girl, in addition to the, to the fact that she stays forever and a day. The next horse with significant sentiments to be attached here is number 10, Lady Abimala. She's out of the Miracle Man Dam, Lady Abijita, who was an Oaks winner of her three-year-old campaign. Written by Paul Francis, the victory in the Jamaica Oaks was Lady Abijita. And Lady Abijita made her debut on the 13th of May at 6 to 1, 5 by 6 and 3 quarter lengths of digital light. And then came back on the 10th of June with Paul Francis called to do duties. And Paul Francis duly won aboard Lady Abimala, beating Phenomenal 1 and May Senator. The next outing over 6 and a half furlongs at the ones of 2 level was bet at 5 to 2, the lukewarm favorite, beaten to third by Essential Quality and Acknowledge Me, two useful horses. So this Lady Ab- Abimala picks up 5 kilos to go at 57 kilos. Now at 10 furlong, she's bred to get a journey out of Lady Abijita, a former Oaks winner. So significant sentiments attached here to the chances of Lady Abimala. One to note very seriously for this year's renewal of the Jamaica Oaks. And number two is All for Love, stays forever and a day, was served behind Mamma Mia and Talita in the Guineas. She gets two further along of the travel, was well beaten in the St. Ledger. That run should be excused. Alan Bongoch and Marad picks up the month for Gears Barty. The visor has been fitted for the first time. All for Love will be coming at them in deep stretch. And all for love with Alan Bongo John Mirage. The last time Alan Bongo John Mirage won a Jamaica Oaks, it was a horse by the name of Caridad. Can you imagine that? Check the history books. The last time Alan Bongo John Mirage won the Oaks, it was a horse named Caridad that he booted on the victory for Foggy Duani and Philip Fiano D. And I tell you, who was second in that Oaks? Right marker, written by Paul Francis. And I remember vividly. The right-hand stick came out on right marker. Paul Francis bounced it to the rail aboard right marker twice on the right-hand whipping. And that significantly affected the outcome of that Oaks. Right marker finished second behind Caridad. I wonder if Alan Mirage and Paul Francis can fight out this Oaks. It's an open contest. I'm going with the 1,000 guineas with her Mamma Mia, hoping that she can last home the trip. Over her stablemate brown skin girl, then... The classy, well-bred Lady Abedita for third and all for love for fourth. Princess Sharon, who was third in a recent state letter, she should be in the thick of things as well. Tevin Foster writes for Fitzroy Grisby, owner, trainer, and breeder. A wide open 84th running of the Jamaica Oaks. Dr. Paul Wright agrees with me with Mamma Mia and Marshall's tip is number seven, essential quality. The tenth and final, it's the Beverly Road Memorial Cup. We have a field of 13 fillies. They'll go 1,100 meters or five and a half furlongs. They run for a purse of one million. And 50,000, my best four here, includes number one, She's Alone, My Charge. This one, a nice uh, three-year-old filly. She's small friend, a late fall, fall on the 8th of June. She's by Soul Warrior out of the Coded Warden Dam. Go Flint, go. Bred Tyrone George Dunk, the only seeker, trained by yours to the Michael Kane, and will be ridden by Shamar Miro, more popular known as Paparazzi. She's Alone with have six administered for the debut. She has worked through into the morning, has shown some speed, and... Uh, the makeup of this event, I'm not seeing much speed in the contest. On the overnight, there was a horse by the name of Sugar Sugar who showed some speed, but Sugar Sugar didn't make it to the final program. So I'm looking at the field of 13 runners and of the other 12 runners, I'm not seeing much speed. So this, she's alone from a level break. I'm expecting her to make the lead with not much speed to go with her. She should take some catching. Veliki Vicky number two, Radish Roman, he gets horses into, into stride quickly and this Veliki Vicky showed a bit of sweet on last when chasing for the first two to three furlongs in that event won by the God of the love of God over Hot Sepper. Look for Veliki Vicky to be in hot pursuit of She's Alone and Company. Number four, Hot Sepper, ran on and dashed with the blinkers fitted, blinkers removed, was second in that same, the love of God event. Hot Sepper has seven forced to portray Anthony Nunes. This one should be coming on in deep stretch. And number 10 is Fearless Reina. This one appears to be the type that should be prominent throughout. Ran well on debut, fifth by four lengths there behind Whiskey and Natural Dancer. Was fifth on dust by seven lengths to Gaddy Gallings at seven furlong. Blinkers now fitted by trainer Greg Fennell. And Roman Appear picks up the mount. It's going to be a mere 47 kilos here for Fearless Reina. Going for number one, She's Alone in the Beverly Road Memorial Cup on Jamaica Oaks Day. To get the better of number two, Veliki Vicky, then four, Hot Sepper. 
and 10, Fearless Reina. Dr. Paul Light makes his cook food special number 4, Hot Sepper, and Marcel's Bet of the Day is also number 4, Hot Sepper. That's the program for you, Turf Talk. I'm your son, Alice Michael Kane. On behalf of our student engineer, Oster Oit, until it's time for live racing from Caymanus Park right here on KLA Sports Radio on Jamaica Oaks Day, first post, 11.45 a.m. Goodbye for now.